Welcome everybody. This is working group project number one for the computer applications class. This project is designed to be done in groups. In a normal semester, each group would then present in order. I'm going to assign which group gets to do what part of the history of computers, and uh, it can accommodate between six and eight groups. Five if you have to. Now, normally I also like to have a lot of props, physical displays. Uh, some semesters this may not be possible, especially for remote learning. So it'll probably end up being some sort of slide presentation, electronic, PowerPoint, Google Slides. I'm using Google Slides right here. We divide this thing into its eight parts. And we want to know what have computers been? Where have they gone? How have they affected us in our societies? We start off with what is the idea of computer? Moving through to a timeline or two. We also want to explore how are they like us? After all, computers are our creations. They're going to be like us. Can't fathom of something that doesn't accommodate us. It's a tool, after all. And then we end up with, where are we going to? <laughs> what are we going to have? The first group has to find out the idea of computer. And yeah, you need to define it. We need to know where the root of the word comes from. Uh, what were the first things called computers? What are the necessary parts for those? What could be powering it? What could be called a computer? What could you call a computer? Some key ideas here. We want to explore the concept of computer, its requirements, its power sources, what, what motivates a computer, and what are they used for? The second group is going to make a timeline. Now, I did this in Google Slides, right? This is just an arrow shape and a couple of call-out buttons. So it's pretty easy to do, to make a timeline. Uh, importantly, though, we don't really want to go over eight slides of content. A slide presentation, like the one I'm giving right now, once it gets to ten slides, uh, everyone's asleep. You're asleep giving it, and everyone in the audience is asleep taking it. On this timeline, I want to know what were the discoveries and the innovations that were required all the way from the dawn of human civilization just until the 19th century, just until like 1800. All right, just touching on the Industrial Revolution. Uh, what were the machines that did computation? What were the tools that humankind designed that allowed us to do math and information science external to our bodies? What were the inventors? There are some very important people in here, some of the names you already know. What did they invent? What was so important about these people? Third group. It's got more complex. I started having fun with the arrows. I want to know what happened in the modern era, within the last couple of lifetimes of humans, the parts of uh, our history that are so close to us. So I want to know about the computers and inventions within certain time periods. So we have like from 1800, going from the previous section to this section, the Industrial Revolution. That lasted a while, actually started in the 1700s, but what were those specific things that were made, those tools, those industries that created the computers of their day? How about the American Civil War and Reconstruction? What were the tools that we made, especially for war? What were the things that were designed that, that automated changed how our society functioned. World War I and the aftermath. What were the inventions there that allowed us to do computation external to ourselves? The machines and the ideas. We saw a real ramping up of that, those things in World War II and in the post-war post era. We start recognizing the machines, the very computers that we know of, the ones that you own. You would be able to start recognizing what they are at this point. During this time, we were warned about it, the industri military-industrial complex, 
the military very much was interested in computational technologies and started involving itself in our schools very directly and in funding businesses and ventures that helped create the computers that we could think of. And the way that we computed, the ideas of computation with, with electronics, and what were those electronics? Now we have microprocessors, but what did we start off with? Business and academia really got into it and started applying these things to how we do our business and the stock market in general. These existed before, but now they could be faster and they could be tracked on a more real-time basis. It wasn't really until oh, the late 70s when we start seeing home computers. Up until here, all these computers were giant, massive machines that filled warehouses. And they didn't have even part of the power that my phone has. We started seeing them get micro-sized and available to our own houses. People started using them. I would like you to go right up to about 1990. Focus on large blobs of time and the kinds of computers that there were and how they affected our society. This is for large classes. So if I have seven or eight groups, this group would take over just from the 1970s to now, really regarding the home market and the consumer market of computers. So those computers that we see were the ones that were desktops, and screens and mice and keyboards, it was a tower, and then it got smaller and smaller, eventually got into our pockets, and we have our phones and other computational devices that we can wear on us, wearable technologies. Now those computers, actually, honestly, not really much different, they're just smaller. Maybe they have an interesting interface instead of a keyboard and a mouse, touch screens and whatnot, or the ability to hear us when we talk to them. But the industries involved, there was a lot of drama. Uh, there was a lot of lawsuits, oh my gosh, IBM, Microsoft, AMD, Intel, uh, Apple. Apple loves to sue people. Oh my gosh. It's one of their favorite things to do. But these suits always revolve around some computational idea that we just accept and think should be there. One of the big ones was the idea of a window. Ooh. Having a program running in one little block and then you can have other programs running at the same time. <gasps> Revolutionary. For its time. We expect it. So how do we see these things happening? You'll, see, you'll probably see lawsuits regarding the real innovations because everybody wants them. Section four, this is a regular section. The body and mind of a computer. Gotcha. In this section, I want you to take the point of view that a computer is a model of the human. What is the body of a human compared to the body of a computer? What parts do we have? that a computer must also have. How can you compare that? I'm talking about the visceral stuff, the organs, the bones, the structure of it. What are the inputs that a computer needs? What are its outputs? What are the inputs that a human needs? What are its outputs? How does a computer sense and interact with the world around it in the way that a human does? Through our senses, and our needs, and our functions. What are the organs of a computer? What parts must they have inside in order to function at all? But separately, what is the mind of a computer? And I'm not talking about the brain of a computer, because that's really visceral, right? I want, what are a computer's skills? What are its instincts? What is its culture? Does it have emotions? Is a computer living? If it's living, can it be alive? Those are two different things. In larger sections, if I have to have eight sections, I would break the mind part off specifically and have a group talk about the operating system, the BIOS, clients, and applications. How are those compared to the mind of a computer? How are those uh, like a human? Five, societal impacts. Woo. Computers have changed how humans 
interact, how we identify ourselves, how we identify what our community is versus our country. You can be directly connected to somebody else somewhere else on earth who doesn't even speak the same language as you. And you can feel closer to them than you do your neighbor. And that hasn't been how humans are through society, through our nature, ever. So I want you to, and this is really esoteric at this one, this one is a very big thought experiment. What is the philosophic conundrums posed by computation? What are the cultures versus the nations? Now, the way that computers have changed how a culture can be endemic inside of a, na a nation, and even within that can be broken up into smaller units because you can communicate and you can have lines of uh, familial structure that aren't within even your own culture that you're declared to have. What are the societal connections? Specifically, how are people connected through computers? What is the financial impact that computers have had on our society? What are the innovations that have driven this? There's a big problem called the digital divide. That's something I want you to kind of touch on. What about self-identity? What are you? The ability to have non-specific identity roles, gender roles, has been because of our ability to talk to each other and experience more than just the culture that we were born into. How about the geopolitical impacts? Obviously, having computers can do things to presidential elections. The political lines get very blurry when you can cross them without any barrier. Finally, section six, the future. I like this one because it's so much fun to do, and I'm a total dork, I'm a geek, I love comic books and, and sci-fi and graphic novels, fantasy, and all that sort of fun stuff. So look at all the popular science fiction right now. Movies, games, shows, comics, books, stuff on the web, the now stuff. Soon, though, there will be innovators who will take that science fiction and turn it into something. They'll try and make it. Beyond that, what do people think is going to happen? There's a lot of articles out there, there's a lot of people who are speculators, and they take the now, and they see who's working on it soon, and they're trying to extrapolate what is the future going to be like to infinity and beyond. What does the future look like when sci-fi becomes sci-fact. You're going to put this onto your website. This is your working group project number one. It should go, uh, uh, depending on what happens in the semester, either it'll go on your own personal website or it'll go on your group's website. Thank you for joining me. Have a good time with this.